Now, as we've been hearing, new research from the UK's leading early years organisation shows that half of providers think that the gap between disadvantaged children and their peers has increased since the outbreak of the pandemic last March. Well, let's speak now to the Chief Executive of the Early Years Alliance, the organisation behind the research, Neil Leach. Thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning and good morning to you. Now, this really lifts the lid, doesn't it, on the realities of the lockdown, but sadly, I imagine it hasn't come as a surprise to you. I confess it isn't. There's been a lot of talk about children in general. Um, and their experiences throughout lockdown. So why would it be any different uh, for very young children? In fact, I would say it's likely to have been more intense as far as young children are concerned, because, you know, the, the learning throughout the early years is fast. And if you take a big chunk out of that, of course, there will be an impact. I think what is surprising is the lack of support that's come from government and the lack of focus and emphasis on supporting these children and their families. And that's been disappointing. And the report highlights the large number of practitioners who have raised concerns. But let's talk about those children. You talk about the large number of children being affected. What age group are we looking at here? And also, can you give us some more details about the numbers who have been affected? Well, you're talking about uh, not fives in terms of the age group. And in terms of what early years educators have told us, they think that around half of poorer children, the gap has widened in terms of, of their learning development and around six in 10 uh, children generally. So that's a, a huge part of the, the early years population that um, early years educators are telling us basically have developmental delays and we have to intervene now. I find it really interesting that government has given 1.7 billion pounds on this catch up recovery program, whatever you'd like to call it, but it's predominantly focused on older children. Of that £1.7 billion, £10 million has gone to the private, voluntary and independent sector, which represents around half a percent. Now, if they really believe, and anybody who knows anything about uh, child development will know that the early years are absolutely critical. They set children up for life. So this is the point where you need to invest. This is the point where you need to ensure that they're able to recover and catch up not further down the line, when you spend billions of pounds trying to fix the problem, we should be investing in preventing the problem. And that has not been the case today. Well, one of the key messages from the government has been about this idea of levelling up. So you've touched on the amount of money that they give, and obviously you say the 10 million isn't enough. What do you want to see from government? I'd like to see them invest in the early years. Unfortunately, the early years sector, it's, uh, it's been underfunded for decades. And I think the problem is that we're not, frankly, seen as part of the education system. I think we're seen as glorified babysitters. What the pandemic has displayed and it's demonstrated quite clearly, we're part of the national infrastructure. This is about children's development, children's education, and therefore I'd like to see them give the same focus, the same attention as they would to children attending schools. We seem to think, and I have to say, this is not all politicians, but there are enough politicians that seem to think that a child's education only starts when they walk through a school gate, and that is ignorant and that is folly. And are you seeing further gaps and disparities when it comes to ethnic groups within these children? Are certain ethnic groups worse off than others? Well, we know poorer families, we know disadvantaged families, and of course, the data will tell you in terms of ethnic groups that they happen to have a, a greater density within those groups. So it's inevitable that uh, ethnic groups will be marginalised, they will be effective, uh, affected uh, in, in all of this research. But we don't have the minutia. We don't have great detail about the effects throughout this pandemic. What this report has highlighted is there is a major problem and we need to dig deeper and we need to put resources and funding in early, not later on. And just very quickly, a nursery um, owner has told Sky News that children could become a partially lost generation. Is this a fair assessment or do you think this is going too far? But again, I come back to this. Anybody that knows anything about early years development will tell you, you have to get it right in the early years. Even the Royal Foundation, in the recent report that they produced, demonstrated that we should be basically investing at the earliest point rather than spending billions of pounds trying to fix problems later down the line. So, yes, we, we run the risk of having a lost generation. We need to give as much attention 
as much emphasis, as much equity to the early years as we do to any other child. All children deserve the right to a good education and to adequate support. Neil Leach, Chief Executive of the Early Years Alliance, thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. Thank you. Time now for a look at the weather. Here's Naz.